Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you and welcome to Islam and Life with me, Tariq Ramadan, broadcasting from London. In today's show, we ask the question, should the world be worried about the emerging total war ideology against Islam? In May 2012, American magazine Wired revealed that the U.S. Army is teaching its officers to use Hiroshima tactics for a total war on Islam. In the course, officers were told that there is no such thing as moderate Islam and that they should consider Islam as their enemy. It advocated taking war to civilians using similar tactics as used in Dresden, Tokyo, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They even talked about possible nuclear attacks on the holy cities of Mecca and Medina and the wiping out of civilian populations. The teaching material concludes, it is therefore time for the United States to make our true intentions clear. This barbaric ideology will no longer be tolerated. Islam must change or we will facilitate its self-destruction. The Pentagon has confirmed the course material obtained by the magazine is authentic. The report says the officer who delivered the lectures still maintains his position at the Norfolk, Virginia College, pending an investigation. It is not clear to what extent similar material has been taught in the U.S. Army. What is alarming is that all those commanders, captains and colonels must have sat through the course and not felt anything unusual. It brings into question the validity of claims that the massacre of at least 16 Afghan civilians, including nine children, in March 2012 was the action of a single U.S. soldier and his personal motivations. This week's Islam in Life asks, should the world be worried about the emerging total war ideology against Islam? Yes, we should be worried or at least ask the question because over the last 10 years what we heard coming from the State Department, coming from the US administration, where we were facing torture, when we were facing massacres of innocent people or collateral damages, it was the, 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 the uh, behavior of someone who was not acting under the order of the hierarchy. This was an isolated case and not coming from the administration and the army and sometimes we come to uh, uh, know that no, it's not exactly this that happened, that uh, uh, the teachings are worrying when it comes to the way per Islam is perceived, the Muslims are treated, and we heard about what happened in, or still happening now in Guantanamo or happened in Iraq. So it's deeper than that, it's really the perception and what is taught uh, to the soldiers and the American soldiers going to Afghanistan, going to Iraq, going to the Middle East, that is worrying, and then the perception that maybe it's not only violent extremists that we are targeting, but Muslims and uh, among them the innocent civilians that are targeted as if Islam was the big and the very threat to the West. These are questions that we have to ask. Are we facing an isolated case or is it deeper than that? And to answer this question, I'm joined by Chris uh, Coverdale. He's a behavioral scientist, mimetic engineer, and an expert in the laws of war. Thank you so much for being uh, with us today. Let me start with, with this first question, because when myself I heard and I read about this story, I, I thought, oh, it might be, once again, something which was uh, isolated. And then you think deeper and say, look, still, with all what was uh, repeated in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Guantanamo, and even, and, and every time we hear the U.S. administration say, no, 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 this is not our policy, these are people who are acting on uh, their own, it's not a policy, it's just, you know, mistakes that were made. What is your take on this? Is it isolated or is it deeper than that? No, oh, it's much deeper. Uh, it's absolutely not an isolated case. It seems to me that over the last 10 years, we've had more and more examples mm. of the American administration finding excuses to attack other countries. And uh, this is definitely not an isolated case. Mm. The idea that anyone should attack an entire religion is, is just utterly appalling. I mm. mean, the fact that uh, their staff college is teaching mm. their officers that uh, this is uh, the American approach is quite appalling. And it is a criminal offense under the laws of war already. Just the idea of attacking a person because of who they are, mm -hmm. because they're Muslim. 
that's an appalling indictment and it is a crime of genocide under the laws of war. So, so this is not uh, an isolated case. It is definitely part of a long-term policy and strategy by America and they will find... So, so let us get to the, the big picture about yep. what happened uh, first in Evo, even before uh, uh, 2001 because we were told afterward, oh, it started with 2001, which is not exactly the case. If we come back to the first uh, uh, war uh, in Iraq and the way the people were treated, we were talking about the Bush administration killing so many people, and yet we have this boycott and section against the civilians in, right. in Iraq, and, and we don't know how many millions were killed, and, and, and the great majority of all the people were innocent people. So, so the point here for me is when you, you, we hear someone saying there is nothing like a moderate uh, Muslims, meaning in fact any Muslim, because he or she is a Muslim, is in fact a threat because potentially he or she is an extremist. So, so how can we explain this? What is behind this ideology, which is we thought it, you know, it's only you know, the Tea Party that is coming now in the States, and behind this there is something which is quite worrying. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's been growing over the last 10, 15 years. It's part, seems to me to be part of the American uh, imperialist policy. Uh, they are trying to take over the world's oil resources and they need to find a number of excuses for doing it violently. Mm. And uh, they, you know, the 9-11 started the Afghan war. Uh, then they tried to come up with the excuse of Saddam Hussein to attack Iraq. They've now got to, I mean, the, the underlying issue is that really most of the oil resources of the world are held by Muslim countries, hmm. are owned yes. by Muslim hmm. countries. And I think they are just trying to build up uh, an excuse to wage war, to take over the world's oil resources. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Middle East countries are very vulnerable mm -hmm. with America and with its allies, Britain in particular, mm -hmm. But, and what is your take, for example, on what was said? Because we were talking about conventions, and yeah. we know that they were uh, ratified in, in, in 48. The American uh, government uh, ratified it uh, 40 years later, meaning that they were not convinced that we have such uh, laws that are protecting innocent civilians and people, and the way we have to deal with even, you know, uh, the prisoners and, and, and something which has to do with ethics of war, that there are things that you cannot do. So what we got uh, after this was revealed, saying, no, 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 the Americans are not doing such things. We, are, uh, 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 we abide by the, the, the law of war and, uh, and ethics. And, 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 and when we come to, to what is happening on the ground, we can see that uh, all these very nice statements, when it comes to war, they are ready to, you know, really, it's just killing innocent people in a way which is not at all acceptable from, uh, uh, by any standards. Absolutely. And it, it is not only totally illegal, mm. it is criminal offences of uh, international criminal offences of murder, genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, conspiracy to murder, and a crime against peace. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are all international crimes which are being committed by the Americans over and over again, and by the British. Uh, by the British as well. Absolutely. And you yourself, you were just after the, 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 the second war in Iraq, you, you, you sued the Prime Minister Blair. Yeah, basically, well, not quite sued, yeah. um, because that's a civil issue. This okay. is a criminal case. And the, mm. the issue is that to go to war, to attack a person because of, uh, and kill them because of their nationality, is a crime of genocide mm. under the Genocide Convention, which was introduced in 1948. And it is, uh, since 2001, it has been a crime under the uh, English law, under the International Criminal Court Act, which is the English version of the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. And that's a crime of genocide, which is universal. And mm. for an American to actively say they're going to kill people or suddenly attack them with uh, weapons and so on, mm. innocent people, who, but because of their nationality, 
or their religion, that is a crime of genocide. There are four criteria for genocide. Members of a na if you attack members of a national, ethnic, racial or religious group as such, hmm. and you kill them, and you do that as part of a state policy, that is a crime of genocide. But, so I have two questions. What, uh, when you get as an answer, this is not what we were going to do. We are not going to kill people because of their uh, ethnicity or, or their uh, religion and their uh, nationality. We were attacking a dictator and his regime. And on, you know, you have to, to go to war. And sometimes these are things that, this is exactly the very, the very uh, meaning of collateral damages, is that you, you, you sometimes are killing innocent people, but the main target was not them because of their nationality or religion, but him because he was a dictator and he was a threat uh, to the region. Now, in law, that, that doesn't hold. Um, the point being that, if you choose to fire a cruise missile into Baghdad, you know that cruise missiles, by their nature, are massively explosive, and that when they land or hit a target, anyone in the vicinity will be killed. Hmm. Now, if you make that choice to fire that cruise missile, that is, you do it in the knowledge that it will most likely result in the deaths of all sorts of people, yeah. innocent or not. And in a war, which is illegal, everyone is innocent. You cannot attack and kill any other person ever internationally. There mm. is never an excuse to do so. It is always unlawful. So mm. the very first crime in the Geneva Conventions is willful killing. Mm. So if you pick up a, cr uh, a gun and shoot somebody, uh, intending to shoot them, and they uh, die, hmm. you have committed a crime hmm. under the Geneva Conventions, mm -hmm. if it is part of a war. Mm -hmm. And if you do so, killing number of people, it doesn't have to be very many, but um, if you actually destroy a, um, a national or religious group, members of that national or religious group, in whole or in part, that is the crime of genocide. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very important to distinguish between what a person says they are doing yes. and their actions, because it's their actions that tell you their real um, intent. Intention, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's that intention that you have to prove in court and is the difference between so this, this collateral damage, yeah. un, unexpected results uh, okay. of death, if you like, and, this and was intentional. The, this was the content of your case against Tony Blair. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, it, and it still is, right still to this is. day. Okay. Okay. He quite deliberately chose to attack Iraq, go in with the Americans, and the Americans have done it as well, and have killed more than a million people, of whom 30% at least were children. Now that's 450,000 children, we believe, have been killed, not only in Iraq, but in Afghanistan and Libya. Hmm. 450,000 children, that's a horrendous hmm. crime. Hmm. And somebody must be held to account for it. Hmm. The British and American governments are constantly going on as if this is normal activity. Hmm. There is nothing normal, so, nothing so, lawful so about he, it. Here comes my, my, my second question. Yes. What would you respond to people saying, at the end of the day, your stance is once again the very old stance that we see with people who are activists, anti-American, anti-British policy, and that's it. At the end of the day, you are demonizing the two countries. And by y using these facts against the fact that they were promoting democracy, they were helping the people who were oppressed. So what would be your answer to this? Because this is the starting point of the, Absolutely. the discussion. Absolutely. Mm. Everything I say is to do with the rule of law. Mm -hmm. All I'm interested in is for our governments to uphold and obey the law. Mm. Now, in 1945, we set out in the UN Charter and promised that we would never threaten or attack another nation state. Hmm. The UN Security Council resolution, um, Article 41 of the UN Security Council, states quite clearly that the Security Council may decide what measures not involving the use of armed force are to give effect to its decisions. Hmm. Now, that phrase, not involving the use of armed force, mm -hmm. is absolutely clear. The idea that Tony Blair can get up and say the United Nations Security Council has authorized the use of armed force is absolute rubbish. Mm. 
it cannot authorise the use of armed force. Mm. So what I'm doing is saying, look, we have the law, we have these international laws of war, which are the most important laws the world has ever signed. We must uphold them. Mm. And the British administration, the American administration and NATO and others are constantly breaking and violating the laws of war. Mm -hmm. and we've got to do so, something so you, about your, it. So your, your main point is about a lack of consistency and hypocritical statements that we are the Democrats and we are the civilized, you know, we, we have the civilized way of going to war, while on the ground it's just contradictory. Everything Absolutely. Which is there, yeah, they have it. contradicted every, they've violated every promise they've ever made. Yeah. If they promise to not attack us and then attack us, that is breaching a promise. Mm -hmm. And if in doing it, they murder mm. innocent people, and that's what you were referring to earlier, mm. that is the worst crime it is possible to commit. Yes. And mm. that's why in 1946 at the Nuremberg war crimes trials, mm. Germany's leaders were held to account for waging wars of aggression, mm -hmm. 11 wars of aggression, in breach of the international treaty for the renunciation of war. Mm -hmm which was the single most important treaty ever signed. It was signed in 1928, and Germany was the first country to breach it. Mm. And they, their leaders were held to account, and uh, some of them were hanged. Yes. So, so your position is that uh, the United States of America, as well as the British government, should be uh, uh, held uh, to account just for what they have been doing in the Middle East, in Iraq, in Afghanistan. When they went into Afghanistan and Iraq, they yeah. did exactly the same as Hitler and the Germans did in the Second World War. They invaded and occupied an independent nation state, mm -hmm. which is in breach of the kellogg briand Pact. And okay. that mm -hmm. is precisely what they've done this time. Okay, it's the same so, so let us come now to, to what is happening and the future. Uh, because if we, we, you know, we were talking about uh, uh, George W. Bush, we were talking about Tony Blair. Yes. These people have now gone. And what we were told is we are now facing a new era. We have a, a new American administration, the Obama administration. Barack Obama is not George W. Bush. He has another vision, another policy, and his take on Afghanistan is quite different. And they are supporting now what is happening in the Middle East with the new, you know, the Arab uprisings and new democratic uh, 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 process and, and, uh, and, and people calling for dignity. And then the same in Europe, even in Britain, something has changed. Do you buy this? this do you think that really now we have, uh, uh, we are, now this is the past and the future is going to be better? No, absolutely not. Um, first of all, it's very important to say this, that genocide is a universal crime. Yeah. Mm. So when um, America and Britain attacked Afghanistan in October 2001, and uh, started to fire cruise missiles into Kabul, they killed numbers of Afghan citizens, and they have been killing them ever since. Mm. Even though George Bush is now out of office, mm. Barack Obama came in, he said he would remove the troops, and instead of removing the troops, he increased the numbers. Mm. And he is therefore committing genocide in Afghanistan. He's the same policy. Absolutely. Mm. If you kill a person because of who they are, and that's mm. the only reason why they're killed. That mm. is a crime of genocide, mm -hmm. even if it's one person. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it's hundreds of thousands. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what is your take on people saying, no, our war in, Iraq, in, in Afghanistan now, it's against the Taliban. It's not against the Iranian people because who they are, but because of the threat of the Taliban. And even Karzai, who is now the president, is asking us to remain. Well, all war is illegal, mm. and this is the point that nobody seems to understand. Mm. You cannot attack another nation state mm. under the laws of war. It mm. is unlawful. Mm -hmm. So as soon as the first shot is fired, you are committing a criminal offense. Mm -hmm. And regardless of the uh, nationality, the activities of whoever it is you are attacking, mm -hmm. You must never attack, use armed force, or kill mm. any other human being. Mm -hmm. If you want to get rid of Saddam Hussein or the Taliban or so on, for goodness sake, use but, peaceful but, but, means. Yes, but can you go from an illegal war to use the term of genocide 
in this very specific situation? Yes, I mean, th there are two separate things. Mm. Um, an illegal war is a crime in itself. It's called a crime against peace. Mm. And as soon as you start to wage an illegal war, you are committing a crime against peace. Separately from that, if as a result of your attack on Afghanistan, you kill one or more people who are members of the Afghan national group, you have um, committed genocide because you are attacking them, not because uh, they are attacking you or because they uh, uh, have done some nasty things to you or whatever mm. it is. Mm. You're attacking them solely because they are Afghans living in Afghanistan. Mm. And that is a crime of genocide. So the two crimes are separate issues. Mm. And it's very important to remember that both crimes have been committed. Mm -hmm. So this is why you think that nothing is changing now in anything which is coming from the British government or the American... Or NATO, uh, I mean, NATO, uh, and, uh, and NATO ISAF, uh, which is the International Security Assistance Force. Mm. There are 41 mm. nations all joining in the Turkey shoot against mm. the uh, smallest, least developed country in the world. So listening to you, we should very much be worried about what is happening in the world. And uh, just to come to some of the points that we are, have been making here, the first is really to come to, to uh, uh, what we heard that, uh, you know, the soldiers, the American soldiers were taught is not something which is isolated. It's coming from a policy, it's coming from a vision. And even though it's not what officially said, there is something which has to do with uh, uh, targeting Muslims and even uh, uh, innocent Muslims as something which is a strategy which is bigger than only, you know, acting against violent terrorists, yeah. but a policy where, uh, at the end of the day, the main intention is to protect uh, geostrategic and, 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 and wealth and oil and, and, and access to oil. And this is where, you know, the people, the innocent people are not so much valued in, in anything which has the, don't, don't have so much value in the way they are dealing. And then the second point that we are making is just to think about the legality of war, which at the very beginning, the illegal war sometimes ending up being genocide against uh, uh, a whole uh, population and Muslims. And then uh, this yes. is where uh, we should very much be worried and at least be aware that things are happening that are official, but not very, very good politics and policies. Thank you for that. Well, that's all we have time for. Please let us know your thoughts and views on any of the shows you have seen. And here is the way to contact us. Islam in Life welcomes your opinion. So please send us your suggestions as well as criticisms on any of the shows you have seen or would like to see. You can do all this by emailing us at islamandlife at presstv.co.uk. You can also be part of our online platform by joining our Facebook page, Islam and Life on Press TV, where you can share your thoughts with other Islam and Life fans, engage with debates and view past shows. Finally, I would like to thank my guest, Chris Coverdale. Thank you so much for being with us. And I hope to see you next week, inshallah.